Well, hey everyone, it's Sunday. I'm back, but not with the typical Sunday video. My typical Sunday video is a temperature blanket update. I'm almost ready for another one. I have 10, I think 10 rows left on the current year side of the blanket to get September complete. I was working on it for a good part of the day yesterday. And I can't wait to get to October because we've actually had some nice weather, especially in the morning. I know that's not the high because I'm doing the highs on my temperature blanket, but oh, it's been gorgeous in the mornings. And at night, it's it's really nice and cool. Don't have to have the air on. I mean, it's set to be on, but it doesn't kick on. So just a fan with the coolness in the air is just like heaven when you're sleeping. But I'm not here to talk about my temperature blanket or any other projects like that, which I did see a new one that I really, really want to try, but I'm not allowing myself to do it yet until I am caught up on my temperature blanket and I am caught up on this other filet crochet baby blanket that I have to finish so that I can get pictures and everything to post the pattern on Etsy. And it's such a cute little pattern. It's just, I got lost in all of these plushies. <laughs> I really did. And I've been having fun doing them. Um, some of the easier patterns that, uh, how do you say this nicely? Some of the more simpler patterns that you see a lot of everyone that is, does the markets, that they do a lot of, don't seem so cute to me anymore after I've made so many of them. <laughs> they are in the beginning, but after you've made so many, it's like, eh, these aren't that cute. So I wanted to find some patterns that were a little more challenging. And last time I showed you guys my sloth that he will not go to market. This is mine. He is forever staying with me, I think. But it's definitely more challenging. And I just, I totally loved making him. So the same pattern designer... Amigurumi Estonia, I think. I will link her shop in the description below. She has some really awesome patterns. And because I wanted to do some things that were a little more challenging, I purchased four more of her patterns. And not doing... Um, as challenging patterns like these before it, it definitely takes me a little longer there are a lot of pieces but not a lot of sewing most of them get crocheted in as you go and then um like with with the little sloth you're only sewing on his head everything else is crocheted in so i ordered four other patterns and, well, first, I made another sloth. And I did this one out of Bernat. And because I was limited on colors, he's kind of a gray theme instead of the browns. But I think he turned out cute. And, you know, the size difference that makes it like you're doing the same work, but you're getting some substance with the Bernat. Although... I love the feel of the parfait and the ease of it working with it because it just glides across your hook. But if you want one with substance, the Bernat. From my ex what few of the blanket yarns I've tried, Bernat. If you want something big, you go with Bernat. But he turned out really cute. I mean, this gray on camera kind of looks like a tan. I don't know if it's coming across the screen to you that way. I wouldn't say it's my favorite shade of gray. Now, this dark gray 
This was recommended by a few of you guys. I, it's a great color. I really like that color. But he turned out really cute. And I just used for his claws, I used acrylic again. And I used, uh, um, what do you call it? Premier's Basics. And I believe the color was steel. So he has his, all his little wild claws here. And he turned out really nice. I like the size of him. He might go to market. Maybe. I'm still debating. So I went back to her shop and I was searching through the patterns. And the one that kept drawing me back is because I wanted a few Christmas items because... You know, my market is November 18th and people should be in the mindset of Christmas shopping. I don't usually myself buy too many Christmas themed items because it's the only time of year you can use it. So I wanted a few though. So the one pattern that kept drawing me back to her shop was this deer. Now I bought it, but I didn't make it yet. Because, well, I got the, I, it has eyelashes on it. And I have to do it with the eyelashes because that to me is what makes its face so darn cute. I looked up a few videos on how to apply the eyelashes onto the safety eyes. And apparently, now you can correct me if I'm wrong, but apparently I don't have the right kind of eyes for it. The eyes that they're showing in the videos have like an edge to it. I think they called it a trapezoid eye. So I need different eyes. But I really want to make a couple of these for this market. Just some Christmas themed. I just think this deer is just so stinking sweet. It just looks really cool. But I did purchase the pattern. I haven't done it yet. So the I bought three others with it. Like if you buy four of her patterns, you get 15% off. And her patterns could be a little pricey. But let me tell you, this, this person puts a lot of work into it. And it's worth every penny the price of her patterns. But if you buy four, you get 15% off. So I picked out four. And I have to wait on the deer. Because I need, I unless I'm good. You guys tell me if I'm wrong. Because I don't want to go and buy something that I don't need. But, so I need the eyes so that I can attach the fake eyelashes. Everything else I have that I need for this pattern. So the next pattern that I bought was a kitty cat. And I ran into a slight little problem on this one too. Not for fault of the designer, my own fault. I started making it. And I have the body, the tail, the little feet, everything. See, all those are crocheted in. And I have the little ears. The ears and the head are the only things that you have to sew on. Now, the problem that I ran into, this is the start of the face. Um, like... I have, I think it's six more rounds to go. And this is the only, this is all the yarn I have left. I don't think I'm going to make it. So I'm going to have to order another rose colored yarn. Um, the other problem that I had is the safety nose. Now I have safety noses, but I don't have the right size. And the ones I have are way too small and they won't look right. So I have to order a 15 millimeter by 13 millimeter pink safety nose in order to finish my cat and probably another skein of this rose color yarn, which I am a little concerned about ordering. First off, do they have it in stock? I haven't looked. And as bad as some of the colors have been with the Parfait Chunky this go round, I'm a little hesitant about ordering it. But I need a tiny, probably a tiny little bit to complete my cat. And then the cat, like, 
She puts whiskers on it. And in her, in her patterns, I, I am like really impressed with this, these patterns. In her patterns, she has links to little video clips. Now granted, she doesn't talk in them because she doesn't speak English. Um, but she's very good at showing how to do the particular thing that might be confusing about the pattern, but she provides a link in all of them. Now for me, because I'm old school and I print the pattern out on paper, otherwise I'm stuck in my button office room in front of the computer, uncomfortably sitting there to try and make the pattern because it, it's, it's on there. And then to, like, to try and do it on the tablet, I'm not that good at using the tablet, so I don't know if I can even download them to the tablet. And I certainly don't want to download anything to my phone, which I'm not sure Etsy even lets you do that either. But even on the computer, it keeps going as asleep. And I have to keep waking up the computer and entering in the stupid password. So I go old school and I print it out. But if I need help with a section of the pattern, I just go back on, watch the video and be like, oh, that's so easy. I should have known that. <laughs> so I didn't get to finish the cat. I'm almost there. I just need those couple of things. And then the next one that I bought from her was a dragon. And this thing is so cute. Um, now I will say I did get a little confused on the feet. I got a little confused on the feet with how you, you crochet it closed so that you can crochet it in as you go in the direction that it should have closed. Now, the way I thought it should have gone isn't how it appeared in her pictures. Now, I probably should have went back on the computer to see if she had a link for how to do that for the little video clips. But unfortunately, I sewed them together, you know, stitched them together the way I thought it looked in the picture. Now, the pictures were very deceiving. So his feet are just a little wonky. I don't think they're facing the right direction. Um, but he's still adorable. So here is my little dragon. He's got his little wings, and I really liked how she did the wings. Now, Jenna had suggested for my make and bacon, I should make a couple of flying pigs. These wings would be perfect for that. So on this one, you have to sew on the tail. You have to sew on his head and then sew the ears on and the wings. So there's a little bit more sewing involved in this pattern. And again, it's a lot of parts. This one took me a little while. Um, I need to get way better at faces. I mean, he, his turned out kind of cute, but like his eyebrows are way up there. But I tried to do it the same as her pictures. Like I counted how many rows away from the eyes and everything. So... I don't know, he turned out really cool. But I thought if he was done in red, like um, like this ruby red, not a bright red, this ruby red. If he was done in red and he used black for the other parts, which of course we all know how hard black can be to work with. So I'd have to sit under a nice bright light to be able to do it and make sure my fingers are feely, that my little feelies are working right. But I think it would look totally cool done with in red with the black or black with like um, mustard. The mustard, I don't have anything sitting here. The mustard color would like double as a gold kind of. And I just think that would look really cool. So I will probably, not probably, I will make more of these in, in different colors and play with that. It may not be, you know, like today or tomorrow because, you know, life. 
but I'm going to make more of these. This, this, I really, I think these are just so cute. And again, it was a little smaller than I expected. And if you see his legs are kind of hanging a little wonky, that's because I didn't. If I would have done the fold the way I thought it should have been, instead of trying to match the picture, which was very deceiving, the it would have turned out right. They would be facing the right direction. But sitting down, you can't when he's sitting down, you can't really tell that much. Because the legs fold up like that, and you really can't tell. But he's so cute. Or in the same pattern, it gives you a way to make it as a dinosaur rather than a dragon. So it's like a two-in-one. Now, that was one, two, the deer is three. The fourth pattern that I got, this one was super challenging for me, which is what I wanted. I totally wanted the challenge. Um, I started it like in the evening and then put it aside and then finished it up the next day. You are making legs, you're making arms, you're making ears, you're making a tail, and then of course the body and the head. Now the only thing you have to sew on with this one is the ears and the head. Everything else is crocheted together. So they're low sew, but they're a little bit, for me anyways, they're a little bit more challenging and they're just so cute. Now this one, this little monkey girl, now you have the choice of making it with a dress or just making it with a plain body. Now I went for the dress because what attracted me to the amigurumi and watching other people's videos is they're showing these gorgeous dolls and they're all wearing the clothes, you know, the anthropomorphic making something look human. And that really attracted me. And I've always said that I want to be able to make the ones where you can dress them up. So when this one had that option, that's what I chose. Now it's not the same as making little side clothes and being able to dress them and all that, but it was close. It's a close second and I think she turned out cute. Now I did have eyebrows on her and eyelids and I took them off this morning because the more I looked at her little face, the more I thought she just looked devious. And it was, I know it was the eyebrows, but all of it was connected, so it all had to come off. So I, I have to try and redo that. Got these cute little ears. I did fairly good at keeping them even. And the, the little dress, this really long tail. Now doing the tubes like this that are only six stitches and you keep going around and around, you would think that would be easy, but it's, for me, it is a little hard to hang on to. It's really tough on these old fingers here. But I think she turned out really sweet. And I used uh, chocolate brown, toffee, and hibiscus pink on this one. I forgot to say what color I used on the dragon. The dragon is blue. <laughs> the dragon is azure, A-Z-U-R-E, and light blue. And the cat was rose, or is rose, and we're lacking on <laughs> enough yarn in the nose. And the deer, she does it in a, a pretty blue and white, and it looked like tan antlers. I don't know that I'm going to stick to her color scheme. There are a couple of other pictures that go along with the pattern. So I really want to make it Christmassy. And what I think makes her blue one look Christmassy is she's got this little like silver snowflake necklace put on it. I don't have that. I don't want to hunt it down. So if I could do 
you know, like put some jingle bells on it, like maybe on his antlers or something. Um, but I'll have to play with the, the colors on those and see what I can come up with. But first, I got to find out about those eyes. And I want to make it in the eyelashes. I have to use them. I know I can do it without it. But I have to use them because that is just what makes that little creature's face look so darn sweet. So those are my only makes. Uh, one, two, three, and a partial. So not a whole lot accomplished, but I did. Like I said, I did work on my temperature blanket. I did the um, mock setup which I am much, much happier with. I worked on the pricing on that. I need to work on cleaning this room because it's a disaster. Um, you know, it, it just gets that way because you take it out, put it back, take it out, put it back. And after a while you get tired of putting it back because you know you're just gonna take it out again. And that's what's happened in this room. So I was looking at my panda. I showed you guys this panda a while back and it's like head and neck look weird. And I was saying that the pattern didn't say whether or not to sew close the head or the, the, the neck or anything like that. So after these, and I'm looking at this sad little creature, I'm definitely taking his head off. I'm going to pull out the Hobby Lobby stuffing and restuff it with the regular polyfill because like even his nose nothing it's not shaping right and it, I know it's that polyfill and then I'm going to sew the head clothes and after doing these heads on these other creatures I have a good idea of how to make it come out right and see if this sad little panda can't become a cute little panda. Now, it won't be hard to see the stitches to take his head off because I can see the black. I didn't do a very good job of sewing it on. So it won't be hard to take apart. But like the shape and everything, it's just wrong. And I know it's that Hobby Lobby polyfill. So that's one thing I want to work on today is to fix my panda and make him presentable. Get this horrible stuffing out of him and re reattach his head. And like, cause like this, it's a fail. It is a, it's a fail. I don't accept failure. And I know it's all a learning process, but this just isn't right. He just isn't right. So I'm going to play with that and make those adjustments. I was saying it's cool, but sitting in here with the door closed and everything, it's warm. Well, I don't have any other news for you, so I am going to, sorry, I just had an Etsy message. Um, I don't have any other news for you, so I'm going to say farewell for now and, and let you know that you need to pop over here and check out this other video. And I am going to go make my buttons.